Hi, this is Dr. Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's take a look at the next video. In this video, we're going to talk about the reactions of alkynes. They are very similar to the reactions we've discussed for alkenes because an alkyne, if you recall the structure, is simply a molecule that has a triple bond between carbons. That means that instead of just one pi bond that we see in an alkene, we have two pi bonds that are orthogonal. Alkynes are slightly more reactive than alkenes towards electrophilic addition and towards hydrogenation, which we're going to talk about next. As you can see, we can use the same kinds of palladium catalysts to add hydrogen to an alkyne. In this case, I've shown the example of palladium on carbon, one of the classic uh, traditional catalysts for doing hydrogenation. In the presence of hydrogen gas, it will add hydrogen across one of the pi bonds of the alkyne to initially form this cis-alkene product. But as we know, alkenes react with hydrogen in the presence of palladium catalysts to add hydrogen across the double bond. And so what we get in the end is a reduction of the alkyne all the way to the alkane product. So hydrogen adds twice to the alkyne because there are two pi bonds for which it can add. Now that brings up a question. If we want to add hydrogen to a triple bond and stop at the alkene stage, what do we have to do? Well, as scientists, we think about the differences between these two steps, and if you consider that the first step is a reaction with a triple bond to go to a double bond, and then the next reaction is a reaction of a double bond going to all single bonds, we know that alkynes are slightly more reactive. So if we have a catalyst which is slightly less reactive than palladium on carbon, maybe we can get the balance tuned for the reactivity to do the first reaction but prevent the second reaction from occurring. In fact what we can do is use a catalyst which we refer to as Lindlar's catalyst. This is a catalyst which is poisoned. It's uh, palladium still on some solid supports, actually ca calcium carbonate in this case, but with a little bit of lead acetate and quinoline that reduces the reactivity of the catalyst just enough so that the alkene does not react but the alkyne still adds hydrogen. And you don't need to remember the details of the specifics of all the ingredients in what we call Linlar's catalyst if you recognize that Linlar's catalyst is the less reactive catalyst to do hydrogenation of alkynes to stop at the alkene stage. So this provides us tools with which we can control what kinds of products we want. If we want to go all the way to the alkane compound, we can use the active catalyst palladium on carbon in the presence of hydrogen, or if we want to stop at the alkene stage, we use the poisoned catalyst, Linlar's catalyst, which is a little less reactive. It should be noted that the addition of the hydrogens occurs in a syn fashion, that is, both hydrogens add to the same side, so we always get cis products out of the reduction of alkynes using these catalytic hydrogenation reactions. The other aspect of alkynes, if you recall from previous chapters, is that the hydrogen at the end of a terminal alkyne, in this case uh, we have one butyne as an example, is relatively acidic. In the presence of a base such as sodium amide, NaNH2, that can deprotonate the hydrogen, leaving the electrons on the carbon of the alkyne, forming what we call a carban ion. Carban ions react as nucleophiles, they are electron rich, and a reaction which we're going to talk about in great detail in a later chapter is a reaction we call the nucleophilic substitution reaction. If we have a species which is electrophilic, such as a carbon-halogen bond that's polarized due to the electronegativity of the bromine, that leaves a carbon with a partial positive charge. And that negative charge can attack that carbon. It's attracted to the plus charge. At the same time, the carbon-bromine bond is broken. It's kind of like the nucleophile is attacking, kicking off the bromine with its electrons because carbon can end up only with four bonds. This is a process which is very useful to us because what it allows us to do is generate a new bond between carbons and this allows us to think about how to use chemistry to synthesize new molecules and build carbon skeletons from smaller ones to larger ones. As chemists, we want to be able to have control over building molecules, and as we build our toolbox of reactions that we know about, that allows us to think about how to go from some starting material that's readily available and create or make something that isn't available, and oftentimes that requires more than one step. So in this example, I have acetylene on the left as that raw material, starting material. Our goal is to synthesize the molecule on the right, which is 3-heptine. 
So how do we do that? Well, obviously we start with only two carbons and we need to add carbon chains onto either end of the acetylene. So we can do this in a stepwise fashion. By using the reaction we just discussed, we can take something like sodium amide base to deprotonate the hydrogen off of one end of the acetylene and then react that with an organic halogen compound such as ethyl bromide. That will add a two carbon group to the left side of the molecule, which I've shown here. And we still have one active carbon hydrogen left on acetylene. We can repeat this process by reacting with sodium amide and then adding on a three carbon group. So we just use bromopropane instead of bromoethane and that allows us to generate this product three heptine. As you can see this is a multi-step reaction. We first have to do the acid base reaction to deprotonate one of the hydrogens and then we have to add the electrophilic species to add on the carbons. We do this a second time to deprotonate a hydrogen species and then that carbanion that's generated can be reacted with another bromine compound that has three carbons to put on the other side of the alkyne. Well, let's take a look at another example. Let's look at the example where we want to take phenylacetylene, so a benzene ring with now a triple bond hanging off of it. And our goal is to make the product which has one double bond here and then a four carbon group which has been attached. So how do we do that? Well, the product itself does not contain a triple bond, it only contains double bonds. But we know a reaction which can generate double bonds from triple bonds. And that is the hydrogenation reaction in the presence of Linlar's catalyst. We just saw that reaction. So if we take that reaction then, the precursor to that would be a triple bond here and then that would be with that four carbon group attached. So now our goal is to go from here to there. And it's very simple. We just deprotonate the hydrogen on the end with sodium amide to make a carbanion and then we add as a second step the four carbon group with a bromine. So the species we need to add would look like this. Okay, that's our four carbon group that we're adding and that's going to be attached then to where the carbanion is generated. And we can think about designing multi-step syntheses. As we continue to expand our knowledge of reactions, we can think about more and more different ways to modify molecules to build the things that we want to build.